All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the Breakdown Daily Recap. I'm Breaky CPK. Of course, one is January 27th, 2018, and we got some things to talk about, as always, including, once again, more recapping the ESL1 Genting. Yet two more best-of-threes taking place, our semifinal matches, leading us into the grand finals. We'll get into that, break it down as somewhat of both the series, see how they went. Also, a couple of updates, including one of those series, uh, a player from Secret, Fata, actually, dealing with a, uh, a sickness, apparently, out there in Malaysia. So he had to step out of the semifinal matchup. Ohio, formerly a fanatic, he stepped in. Again, we'll talk about his performance upcoming here. And then on top of all of that, we have, uh, you know, I think a fun stat to definitely point out uh, that, that notice that Reddit actually had pointed out, believe it or not, over Nahaz. Or maybe Nahaz did first and they took it from him. Who knows? The point is... That's what we're going to be focusing on. As you can tell, ESM1 Genting, of course, happening. And today, at least, that is 100% of the focus. So, first things first, the semifinals taking place for ESM1 Genting. I did not get the chance to watch the most of Liquid vs. Evil Geniuses. I did actually get a replay analysis, uh, Newbie vs. Secret, here shortly before I'm doing this recording. So, that's a little bit more fresh in my mind. I watched a little bit later on of the Liquid vs. Evil Geniuses series. Uh, as you can see, though... In, the, in short, both of the teams that moved on, Newbie, 2 nothing over Secret, and Team Liquid, 2 nothing over Evil Geniuses. So we get our rematch of TI7 as a result here in the ESL1 Genting Finals. Obviously a lot of excitement and hype for that, a best of five. Cannot wait for that. But how they got there, let's kind of break that down a little bit more. Newbie versus Secret, kicking off with that. So first things first. Before all of that, it's worth, of course, talking about this situation. I'm looking at Fanta's Twitter right here for those of you watching on the YouTube channel or stream even. Uh, Fanta announcing shortly before the match, actually. It's happened not too long before it. Uh, quite sad about being prevented from competing on stage here in Genting due to the illness. Good luck to the boys against Newbie. Time to rest and spectate. Um, Again, we're still not exactly sure what the official information is on terms of what the sickness is or if how severe it is. Frankly, with the way the tweet was sent out and from my understanding, from what I've been hearing, it, it's nothing too serious, which is obviously very good news. But again, I we, there is nothing official yet either, so I don't want to you know jump to conclusions necessarily one way or the other. But simply put, it was enough to put him on the sidelines and actually have Ohio step in for the time being. So, of course, Ohio from Malaysia. I don't know if he already was at the event or if they called him up and had him come out. You know, they did have a, uh, I want to say a couple of days break even because they had a bye in the first round and they also played uh, their match against Furnace Pro, I want to say, yeah, a couple of nights ago. So they did have a couple of days. Maybe they knew this a little bit earlier on and uh, just now officially announcing it. Who knows? So, knowing that, though, Ohio stepping in, at least they got a very, very good offlane player on such short notice. Obviously, it's understandable that it was allowed. You know, whether or not you want to make a discussion on shouldn't have been allowed, shouldn't they had to maybe use Sunbi, who's their coach, of course, for the team, and he should have had to step in. Uh, frankly, I, I mean... If this was a traditional sport and, you know, we were following those kind of rules, then, yes, there is an argument to be made where uh, they shouldn't be allowed to just pick off a player off the streets, you know, the day of a, of a match and be like, here, play for us. But at the same time, to be fair in traditional sports, if we want to make the comparison, that there is the, the, the free agent market where there there's at least periods of time throughout the seasons that you are allowed to do that. And you literally could call somebody up a couple hours before a game if you need a player for whatever reason and have them come on. And, you know, in Ohio's case, I, I believe he is still technically under contract with Fnatic. And not that there's anything here by any means, more so than him just substituting. But uh, I'm sure they, they had conversations with the Fnatic team and, you know, made sure everything was okay. Uh, in the end, uh, deciding, yes, it was. So he's stepping in for uh, for Fata. So there's that part of the discussion. Now as far as the games themselves go. So like I said, I did actually get the chance to go through the replays and do my, my blitz replay analysis, as I'm calling it. Um, a real quick note on that, right, right uh, first off. I did it yesterday as well. I actually posted those on YouTube, the Newbie versus Vici series and the Virtus Pro versus Evil Geniuses series. I, I had some fun doing it. It, it. It's actually a new piece of content I could honestly see myself doing more of, as well as these daily recaps. Um, it's basically me just 
fast-forwarding through replays. So it's, it's not like we watch the whole thing, but it's me fast-forwarding through through, the, through replays. When it when a big fight comes up, I usually slow it down, even do like half speed to really break down what happened, and then you know fast-forward again after the fight takes place. And so you, you, it's I, I do my best to go through a lot of the farm time and just catch the big action shots of the game, almost like a highlight reel, I guess you can call it of sorts. But it's also a way for myself and maybe those out there, at you as well, to uh, to watch a match or a series even that you missed. Um, but in a faster manner and, you know, being able to absorb what happened uh, that much uh, quicker and also on a, on a pretty in-depth level, ideally. So check that out if you want to. Again, I'm calling it the Blitz Series Recap right now. Maybe I can think of a better name. Who knows? But, you know, the Blitz being it's supposed to be fast, not after Blitz the caster. I mean, as great a person as he is. I, it's not after him, okay? Um, so yeah, let me know if let me know if you like that. If you don't, you know, cool. It's it's not something that I have to post. I may just do it on my own time, but I figured why not? If I'm gonna do it, might as well, you know, even post it and make it a content piece. Okay, on that. Finally, talking about the games, newbie versus Team Secret. So game one. So uh, they actually put Ohio on Omni Knight in the first game of the series. Nothing crazy there. A big thing about the first game, though, was the Secret decided to go with a pretty greedy strategy of running the Lone Druid and Invoker. They did that against Virtus Pro. Remember, in that game one, that's how they ultimately won the game. They eventually got the Ags on Lone Druid. Invoker, they were doing a lot of split pushing, a lot of backdooring of sorts, and it just became too much to handle for Virtus Pro, ultimately allowing them to win the game. They went for that same idea, safe to say against uh, against Newbie here in the first game. But Newbie were a little bit more prepared in the long run. Um, all cores on Newbie's side had a very good start. It was a Sand King. I uh, see now I'm blanking on who it was. It was a Sand King, TA, and a Luna. That's right. All three had a very good laning phase. They, got, they were top three net worth in the game by around 15, 20 minutes even, I want to say. Uh, the Blink Dagger on Sand King, especially though being played by KP, was the biggest factor. They had a huge fight at the top lane where they killed both the Omni Knight as well as the Lone Druid, and that's where things really started to snowball, it felt like. And then one other note is they yet again got Kaka on his Naga Siren. We mentioned yesterday against Vici Gaming how fantastic he played against them in both of those games. Yet again in game one of this series, and guess what, spoiler alert, moving forward, he also got it in game number two. This hero, in my opinion, going into the Grand Finals, should get banned <laughs> if you're Team Liquid. It's a clearly a very comfortable hero for Kaka right now. Faith on Disruptor is another one that we have known even for a while. Nothing ridiculous there. I mean, that is another possible candidate, but, man, he plays it so well. The Sleep is such an annoying tool to deal with, and that's one of the other tools that uh, Secret has clearly had trouble dealing with, frankly. And both Ace and Mid-1 and Invoker, they really could never get going. And it's a long story short in Game 1. Newbie was able to take that to a victory and take the first game. Game number two, much, much different game in that secret. At a point in game number two, they were up 20,000 net worth with two racks down. And then a Divine Rapier came into play in the hands of SCCC on Medusa. Leading up into that point, though, Ohio, he was playing the Underlord. He actually went a very early Crimson Guard. I loved the choice right there. Um, it proved to do a lot of work in the game, especially earlier on. He then built into more of an S and Y and even a Radiance, which, you know, <laughs> I'm not used to. Personally, I, I like to kind of stick with the utility in the Aura build. But, I, you know, I will say he could deal some good damage, and Radiance definitely was a good tool to have that game. They also ran with a Troll Warlord OD core. The synergy was definitely there. The cores were having a good time earlier on. Um, but then, you know, when they were getting this big push happening eventually, where they killed two sets of racks, both Ace and Mid-1 died, where Ace especially, he went way too deep. He dove nearly all the way to the fountain. It almost seemed like they were, they were at the point where they thought they had the victory and they were kind of playing overtime, which obviously happens. But... Clearly, that wasn't the case. He ended up dying. Mid one actually got glimpsed back from an Underlord Dark Rift. They ended up killing him as a result. And they both had buybacks, but you could kind of tell that's where things all of a sudden opened up for Newbie. And that's where SCCC bought the Divine Rapier shortly after. They held them at the at the base of the last tier three tower, as well as the last set of racks. Uh, they killed Underlord with no buyback, pushing that top lane. 
and Newby then kind of took advantage of that, snowballed from there. They pushed down middle lane. They killed the racks. They killed uh, Ace, I believe, even with no buyback in that situation. Uh, mid one had to use his buyback, and there you could tell Secret was just kind of getting panicked in that mode of, oh, crap, we're about to throw this game, aren't we? Um, they eventually fell back, Newby did, but they kind of reset, and I think Death Triple C then finished a full Daedalus and a Mjolnir, and they went right back in, and... Secret couldn't handle it. At that point, SCCC was just way too farmed, dealing insane amount of damage, and they could not kill him. Naga, once again with the sleep, was there to protect. They also had a GAs from Omni Knight being played by KP this time around, and it was all about the four protect one strategy, which paid off in the end. So SCCC carried his team to victory, and thus Newbie took the series two games to nothing. So they move on to the finals. In the other series, again, going to be a little bit more to the point here. Liquid versus Evil Geniuses. Um, Liquid advancing on 2 nothing. Long story short of this series is that Liquid frankly dominated Evil Geniuses. And I know that second game says 36 minutes. That game could have been over in about 20 minutes, I feel like. I caught the tail end of it, but again, even looking back and hearing the post-game analysis, uh, apparently GH on Earth Spirit had one of his better performances we've ever seen him have, and that means a lot for a player like GH. Across the board, though, they've just played phenomenal. They once again went a, with a little bit different of a lineup. That This is a team that never necessarily does the same thing every single game, and Evil Geniuses just seem thrown off guard. And, and there, there is, there's a couple things to take from this. One, Liquid is just still the team to beat right now. They are the defending TI champions. They're a big deal. And on the other side of it is Evil Geniuses. And going back to yesterday's tweet by Sumail, a lot of people are having fun in reaction to that. We did talk about it here on the Daily Recap yesterday. Uh, he sent out the tweet essentially suggesting that people call him a non top tier team are, are shit and you know they have no clue what they're talking about he, and they proved them wrong with the victory over Virtus Pro. I don't have the exact quote here but it essentially was along those lines. And as I said yesterday I understand where he's coming from. I understand they're frustrated perhaps by a lot of the uh, remarks that have been made by those out there including myself. I'm not a I was not a huge fan of this roster move in the first place. Not that I can't work out, but I just didn't think it was necessarily going to lead to the better, at least initially. They've been looking okay so far. Yes, that was a big victory against Virtus Pro, but hold your horses. You still have Liquid and then the eventual Grand Finals before you're winning this tournament, and then maybe at that point you could, you could make quite the bold statement, but... Let's just say it maybe bit him in the ass a little bit as uh, there's a lot of reaction to that now happening. Again, he's a young guy ultimately still, uh, and uh, no, I, I, I'm always a fan of banter. I'm always a fan of trash talk. I'm always a fan of players showing emotions. But in cases like this, you know, maybe a learning experience you'd hope <laughs> for Sumail that uh, you, you might not want to talk too much before – uh, you know, th things happen, and but yeah, again, Liquid got absolutely, or excuse me, Evil Geniuses got absolutely destroyed by Team Liquid. So again, we get our TI7 final rematch. Liquid versus Newbie, best of five, minor title on the line here for ESL1 Genting, and that $400,000 prize pool as well as the 400 DAC points. DPC points, excuse me, not DAC. All right, that pretty much does it, though, for today's Daily Recap, going over the ESL1 Genting second day in the main event. That leads us into our finals. Uh, I'm super excited for tonight. I don't, <laughs> I'm going to try my best. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay up necessarily. I'll probably end up just recapping it via analysis replay. It's just, it's at such an awkward time. I will say that is kind of one unfortunate thing about this event, though, on top of all the drama that it's had. But even at the main event, the schedule was set up where it's only going to be two best of threes these first two days, and then a best of five on the third day. That's not, you know, that's not where we're used to when we have these big LAN events. Usually, it's a full day's worth of Dota, you know, eight plus hours. But especially since both of the series have been two nothing so far and pretty quick in both cases, it means the people that are there in person, you know, it's been a little bit unfortunate for them, I'm sure, as far as coming up. But at the same time, they've been able to meet a lot of the players, a lot of the talent, which is obviously a good experience. And something tells me tomorrow's grand finals are going to be pretty epic. I would not be surprised to see a five-game series once again between Liquid and Newbie. Guys, thanks for tuning in to the Daily Recap. As always, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, all over the place. I was Breaking CPK, January 27th, 2018. We'll see you guys tomorrow.